Splunk PSP now supports yet another platform, the web. A web browser is a nice platform to support if you think about it. You build only a single artifact in contrast to a native application and instantly support a huge array of devices. And it's truly instant, just type in the address bar and the application is there. Same for the updates, the user always runs the most up-to-date version, and that's even without installing anything on the device. If I make a new release of Splunky PSP, you'll be able to test it in your web browser before even dropping it to the PSP. What's more, the developer can bypass more or less restrictive software distributors like App Store or Google Play, potentially saving money. And that's clearly a lot of benefits. But the codebase is in C++, not a language you typically associate with a web browser like JavaScript. So how did I make it run in a web browser? When you build a native application, each platform has its own format of executable. PE on Windows, ELF on Linux, Dwarf on a Mac. These executables are so-called build targets. In the process of building, source code is transformed into a build target. Now, here's the catch. The build target that can be run in a web browser is not your typical executable. It's WebAssembly. WebAssembly, as the name suggests, is like assembly, but it's run not directly by your CPU, but rather by a virtual machine inside your web browser. This way, you can write once, run everywhere. A phrase that should remind you of Java, not a natively compiled language like C++, so it might be confusing. And uh, just like you need a toolchain when building an ordinary executable like GCC, LLVM, MSVC, for WebAssembly, you use mscripten. Mscripten has great CMake integration, so adding it didn't differ much from targeting any other platform. Passing CMake toolchain file variable during the project configuration is half work done. The other half is adjustments in your codebase. When it comes to codebase changes and scripten forced on Splunky, there are two things. The first concerns the game loop, while the second one concerns OpenGL. A classical game loop can be simplified to while the game is running, pull input, update logics, render. The problem it creates for mscripten is when the browser event loop calls your game, and in effect your game loop, the browser event loop will be blocked on executing your code. Let me quote official mscripten documentation on that. Graphical C++ apps typically run in an infinite loop. Within each iteration of the loop, the app performs event handling, processing, and rendering followed by a delay to keep the frame rate constant. This infinite loop is a problem in the browser environment, because there is no way for control to return to the browser so other code can run. After a period, the browser will notify the user that the page is stuck and offer to hold or close it. So how do I mitigate this? I remade the game loop in a following way. While the game is running, tick. While the tick, contains all the previous logics. And then I call mscripten set main loop, a pointer to the tick function, 60 as in 60 FPS, and true. True means this call will be blocking. It means that it will simulate an infinite loop. If it was false, it would just call this function and go ahead. This way, the web browser will do only a single update of my gain loop and then get back to its own business, so every task will get its own share of attention. Pseudocode aside, this is how it looks before and after in Splunk PSP. Okay, now the second codebase change. As you might know, I'm using a library called GLAD to load OpenGL function pointers dynamically. For some reason, it doesn't work in a WebAssembly context, and I'm almost sure it's just because I'm using the legacy OpenGL version. The workaround for this is to just directly use OpenGL headers provided by SDL. I created a dummy GLAD directory with a GLAD header file, which in reality includes SDL. The complete integration along with the codebase changes took maybe a few hours, and that's mostly because of the OpenGL confusion. So calling CMake build results in these two artifacts, Splunk PSP.js and Splunk PSP WASM. Now, I needed an HTML file with a script section which would reference them. It's a very simple piece of code, most of the file is the CSS styling to position the canvas. Where do I host it? On GitHub. 
If you don't know, there's GitHub Pages, which offers free hosting from my GitHub repository. I place set HTML file, the .js and .wasm artifacts on GitHub Pages branch under Splunky PSP repository, and that's all. Splunky PSP are online. As you might remember, to avoid using file system on the PSP, I decided to use a technique called resource compiling. It boils down to encoding the file you want to use into a header file, which defines a byte array with the contents of your file. This way, the application becomes more portable. The fallout of this decision in the web context is it takes some time to load Splunky PSP. And because it is in a single file, I can't dynamically fetch the assets I need. All the assets are forced to load initially. Not that it matters much because the .wasm file is only 13 megabytes anyway. The other thing that caught my attention, debugging the web build. Can I breakpoint in C++ code in a web browser? Supposedly it is possible, here is a blog post from Kitware, the CMake authors, but from my read, it's not worth it if I can just build the native version for the host and debug it locally. Coming to another point, the web build opens doors to all kinds of mobile devices. Problem is, I didn't add any on-screen controls, so even if it works, it is useless as of now. Once I add them in the future, Splunk PSP on your phone without any installation. And lastly, the fact that the OpenGL-based renderer yet again caused a problem when integrating a new platform is another argument for me to implement a CPU-based renderer using SDL pixel blitting. It's sufficient for this kind of game and no need to involve a GPU, especially for the sake of portability. That would be all. I'm leaving all links to the technical resources in the description. Visit the site and have fun. Cheers!